took a while to get it uh, to get it like a uh, a fixed job. It was sort of <coughs> on the loose. I didn't know where to put it and where to where to get the money from to pay for it and stuff like that. So, how has been the learning process of the people of Iceland uh, by appropriating this kind of forms to conceive democracy? There is this concern, at least here in Colombia and maybe in South America, about uh, the cultural background of individuals, the access, that, the limitations in access that they have to electronic devices and internet. Uh, can you please elaborate about, uh, more, more about the, the, the learning process of the people? How has been the experience in your country? Uh, well, well, I think uh, it's... Have you uh, found some changes during, during the years and so on? Yeah, well, well, I mean, I mean, one of the things, obviously, you know, which is, you know, I mean, both true in, in Iceland and, and, and also in Estonia, is that, you know, those are two very well-connected societies in terms of internet penetration and things like that. So, so it's not been a major issue. I mean, we've had, for example, uh, uh, when we've done the electronic budget vote every year, uh, you know, the city libraries have been places where people could come if they either don't have access to a computer or if they just need help to, to you know, to, to, you know, to do the voting and things like that. And, uh, and uh, our sort of like development focus as, as well over the past year has been to make sure that uh, our uh, applications uh, work well on mobile phones. Because we realize in many parts of the world, you know, mobile phones are the main digital gateway uh, unit, you know, to, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, you know, way for people to, uh, you know, access, uh, access those sort of services, uh, you know, and in many cases, you know, people will, uh, you, know, ne you know, never use a laptop or a computer, they, they just use the mobile phone. And so uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, the different challenges, obviously, in different countries. And, uh, but, uh, but, uh, you know, so far, uh, you know, in uh, you know, at least in Iceland, it's you know, you know, it's not been a big problem. And and there's another aspect of it is that we are very much focused on you know younger people because that seems to be the main main problem. Uh, even with the uh, electronic budget was we did for, for for the first year when we got the it's because we have like a secure login, uh, you know, for the budget vote which uh, has like a central uh, voter registry. Uh, and we get like anonymous demographic data from it. We see what age groups are, are using the system. And it was a shock the first time we got it because, uh, uh, you know, the you know, 16 to 29, you know, was a smaller group than, uh, than 60 plus, you know. So, <laughs> so it's like, and, and this is very high tech, young people are super high tech here, you know, and everything, you know, they've got all the gadgets and uh, access to everything. But, but they were just not participating because they are just in the cynical times we've lived, you know, the past few decades, you know, it's, um, you know, the uh, apathy is most there. People, the young people just say, well, I don't know, it's, the system doesn't work, I don't care. And so, so that also connects to uh, how, uh, in terms of access, you know, uh, you know, that younger people usually have better access, e even in countries that have lower pe internet penetration, you know, younger people usually have, uh, well, a large, large you know, numbers of them have at least mobile phone, like smartphone, like access, you know, to, you know, you know to the internet. And, and those are really the people we're focusing on because those are the people who are not showing up. And, mm -hmm. and if we lose a whole generation of people who have stopped believing in democracy, I don't know, where's that going to end? You know, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, how have, considering this experience that you had, how have you deal with a fair distribution of uh, participation of voices and maybe not uh, the um, penetration in the f these fair flows of information of groups that, are, that try to generate debate in one or, or the other side of issues uh, debating in the, in the platform? We have actually encouraged like pressure groups to use better Reykjavik to put forth their uh, their uh, points and it has been done especially by the uh, Viking Association of Reykjavik and and others uh, have used it to promote what they think is really important and we think that's good for democracy really the bad thing is if there is a group that comes and just derails everything and uh, and uh, like doesn't listen to anybody else's opinions
But what has happened is that people have had a good discussion, uh, both the people that come up with the ideas and the people that oppose them have had good discussion with good points for and against those ideas. And they have gone like that into the city administration in which the city has been able to, <coughs> to review both parts of it. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how well that would work if this was a total direct democracy, but better Reykjavik in general is more like this uh, sort of collaborative democracy between the citizens and the, uh, and the politicians. And so the politicians have the last word, they make a decision and they have to uh, tell why the decision is such and everybody that was, uh, has been interested in uh, this uh, specific idea gets an email telling them there's an answer and, it's, uh, and you can go and check it out there. Yeah, that's so a, if that feedback is also really important. And, and I think it's uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, the protection of minority, uh, you know, is a big, big thing for us. And we, and we think a lot about that is that, that uh, you know, we don't want electronic democracy to become, you know, like synonymous with just majority rule. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know what I mean. Obviously, majority should have, you know, strong say what happens, but it should not uh, infringe on, uh, on on minorities. Uh, you know, and, and in any ways. And I think, uh, like when we first launched our first apps in 2009, one of the issues there was that that, like in the discussion forums that we have like, you know, similar as on Facebook or, or wherever else, you know, you have a discussion, somebody says something and then you have a comment underneath it and another comment and another comment. You know, people sometimes would go in there and derail the discussion, you know, start like personal attacks and blah, 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 blah all that. So actually what we came up with, uh, with, uh, with uh, 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 is to split the screen in two. So the left side of the screen uh, you have the points for the issue or for, for the idea on the right side of the screen you have points against it so if you see a point that you don't agree with you can't just go in and comment on it and say like oh you're 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 an idiot or whatever you know like uh, or something like that you have to actually go in and write a counterpoint you know mm -hmm. that's quite hard sometimes you know but but when people do it it's it's quite effective and, and, and also, it also gives also, uh, sorry, also when people go into that mode they start to think, how can I best tell people about this point? How can I convince people to agree with me? Which is a much more positive way of debating than of attacking your opponent. So we generally get like good, good points for and against the issues. Yeah, and also, also because uh, in the user interface, the points for and against have equal weight in the user interface. If there's a minority view that doesn't think the idea is good, they have uh, as much, I, no, no matter how many people support the idea or, or oppose it, uh, you know, the minority voice is, is, is as strong as the, as, as the majority voice. You can see the arguments there, you go to the idea and mm -hmm. you see the best mm -hmm. points for it and the best point against it side by side, you know, sort of equal, equal way. And there's also a way to uh, give the voice of the minority, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if the minority views were just at the bottom of the page, nobody would read them anyway. No, I see. That's very interesting. Okay. Um, okay. What are the upcoming challenges for the Citizens Foundation and the upcoming challenges for your organization? What are you planning in the short term and in the medium term? Well, like always, funding is. Uh, is, is one is the biggest issues, you know. That, I mean, that's the biggest issue. I mean, we have very much sort of been with like volunteer driven organization and will continue to do so, but we want to try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, make up, you know, a bit more of an operation out of this, maybe hire a programmer or two. And uh, so, so that's one thing. Funding is, is uh, sort of an ongoing thing that we're always looking at uh, how we can uh, uh, sort of fund our projects, and uh, yeah. Challenges. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, to get people to participate. I mean, that's the. Sorry if it sounds like repeating ourselves, but that's really the sort of the crux of the matter. Because if you don't have any participation.